from a nightmare of using different charging apps, broken charges, and many other problems that I'll reveal, Robert's 400 mile road trip exemplifies these eight problems that are associated with charging electric vehicles. Spoiler alert, number seven might trigger some of you, but rarely it shouldn't. Just let me know your thoughts on charging port standardization. Let's begin with problem number one. His journey started from St. Louis, Missouri and ended in Chattanooga, Tennessee in a Polestar 2, which is a decent electric vehicle with a peak charging speed of 150 kilowatts. His first stop is Perryville, Missouri. In his mind, he thought that he could simply stop at a DC fast charger station, take out a credit card, swipe, and voila, his car would start charging. When he got there, the situation was different. The charging station is owned by a company that very few, I guarantee, have ever heard about, Francis Energy. The charger couldn't accept any credit card, Google, or Apple Pay. To access it, you have to have the Francis Energy app. And there, my friend, is the first problem with electric vehicle charging. The need for proprietary apps can be a huge inconvenience and a time killer. From downloading a new app to installing it to supplying your personal and payment details, the process can be annoying. I understand that the business model of Google, Facebook, Amazon, etc. of collecting and monetizing personal data is very attractive. So the electric vehicle charging business decided to copy the model. What I think they missed is that Google, Facebook, and Amazon had two main things in their favor. They are near monopolies in their space, which to be clear, the charging infrastructure business is not. They are competing with the giant that is Tesla and also gas stations. The other point is that the service that is provided by, for example, Amazon is unparalleled. Think same day delivery, zero purchasing friction, and no frills return policy. I can go on and on and on. The electric vehicle charging infrastructure from most companies is nowhere near this level of customer service excellence. So what I'm saying is, with such a subpar product, forcing people to sign up to your apps instead of straight up credit card swipe is super unattractive to most customers. Which leads me to point number two. But before that, let me request you to support my work by subscribing to this channel and giving this video a thumbs up. Let's continue. Unreliability of charges and charging stations. It is very common to show up at a charging station and find out that the charges are either broken or they are giving out less power than what they are rated for. For example, Robert's Polestar 2 is rated at 150 kilowatts peak charging speed and the app showed him that his next charging station has charges with 150 kilowatt power. He arrives at the station and the output he got was a maximum of 50 kilowatts. That means instead of about 30 minutes to charge from 10% to 80% state of charge, he needed to wait for 1.5 hours, which is a huge inconvenience. At his next stop in Cape Girardi, some charging units were broken without any notice in the app. It was up to him to figure out which units were working and which units were not working. That's another time killer. Charger coverage. This problem is more pronounced for non-Tesla vehicles. Of course you would think that since most manufacturers like GM, Ford, and recently Toyota and Lexus have adopted NAX system, this problem would be history. But no, NAX for non-Tesla vehicles is only compatible with Generation 3 equipped superchargers or higher. Meaning your coverage is still limited because you cannot use Gen 1 and Gen 2 superchargers. And for this reason, Robert couldn't charge at any nearby Gen 2 supercharger in Katawa if he needed to. His next best option was some many miles ahead in Clarksville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee was no different for him. It is also underserved in terms of coverage of supercharger stations. The point here is, be sure that the supercharger station that you're banking on is equipped with Gen 3 or better. Need for detailed trip planning. This might depend on how your brain is wired. Some people like to plan their trips to the last detail. Others enjoy a fully open, figure out as you go kind of a trip. And then there are many others that fall in between these two extremes. 
Regardless of which side you belong, the electric vehicle trip experience is significantly different from driving an internal combustion engine vehicle. With internal combustion engine vehicles, practically any route you take to your destination will be covered with a gas station. For electric vehicles, especially for long distance trips, you need to meticulously plan out your route and be sure you have redundancy. One charging station may not work out as planned. You want to have enough juice remaining to be able to take you to the next charging station. And even with that, fingers crossed that the next one that you are going to is also in working order. Limitations of home charging. An argument can be made that Robert could simply have home charged his poster to overnight to full capacity. With that, he needed not to stop at Perve, which is 70 miles from his starting point. But what if he lives in an apartment or a condo? I am thinking about the difficulties of running wires to install a home charger in such a situation. And then there is the additional cost of level 2 home chargers. Some of these do not come cheap and it's not a straightforward thing to justify their cost based on electric bill savings. Annoying fellow electric vehicle owners. You will have to deal with some annoying electric vehicle owners. Like this guy that Robert found at Nashville, Tennessee, who simply packed his Mercedes-Benz EQS at a charging spot but wasn't charging the car. Or this other one in Clarksville, Tennessee, with Chevrolet bought EV plugged to a 350 kilowatt charger while there were other low-powered units available. Just in case you didn't get the point, the bought EV can only charge at a maximum speed of 55 kilowatts, and it is an inconvenience to block others whose vehicles can handle the high-powered units. But because I like to stay on the positive side, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt and say that people don't do these things deliberately, at least most people. Being a new technology, they just don't know some of this information. That's why I requested you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up so that it can be shown to more people and maybe through that we can spread the word. Charge port positioning. The opening up of the Tesla supercharger network to other electric vehicle manufacturers is both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because the extensive supercharger network significantly reduces range anxiety of pretty much all electric vehicle makes. On the flip side, it is a curse because superchargers were optimally designed for Tesla vehicles, all of which have their charging port on the rearmost left side of the vehicle. Other makes have different positioning for the charging port. And this can be a pain in the neck when it comes to adjusting parking behavior of most drivers. For various reasons, some drivers prefer to nose into the parking spot, while others like to back into the parking spot. The position of the charging port takes away this freedom. Drivers are forced to park in such a way that the charging port is closest to the charging unit. Let me know if you have experienced this problem before and whether or not you would like to see a standardization when it comes to positioning of the charging port on electric vehicles. Electric fire scare. Electric vehicle batteries are known to be dangerous when it comes to catching fire. Of course, some of this is pure misinformation from the anti-electric vehicle gurus. But that risk is still there even as it is with gas cars. The only difference is that electric vehicle battery fire is very difficult to put out once it ignites. So as long as we continue to see news in the media about electric vehicles catching fire, there will always be anxiety on electric vehicle owners that maybe my car is the next victim. There are other electric vehicle problems that I covered in this video and you should definitely check it out. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel.